Let's talk about some 7800 homebrew games. Now, some of these are new, some of these are old. I just wanted to play them, so let's check them out. Let's start with 1942. It's got some, some pretty decent music, actually. It's kind of neat that there's some animated gauges and stuff up at the top there. This is when I figured out that you could just hold down the button to fire. Before this game, I was like, constantly hitting the fire button. It was getting kind of uh, annoying. But uh, yeah, nice that you can just hold the fire button down. Oh, gotta remember to get that POW. You can increase your firepower that way. They're kind of hidden though, they're, they're gray, so they're hard to find. Oh, and then that plane just kind of hits me from behind. That's not cool. Made sure to avoid them that time. This is a game that really suits the 7800. There's not a whole lot of graphics to deal with, and uh, you know, there's a lot of shooting, and it's pretty fun. All right, here's a game called A Roach in Space Part 2. <laughs> so there was a first one. I didn't even know about the first one. Ow, watch out for the rocks. This game reminded me a little bit of Mega Mania because there's so much variety in the enemies that you're shooting. Like Now I'm getting attacked by killer tomatoes. <laughs> I guess this is just like a day in the life of a cockroach. Just trying to avoid <laughs> tomatoes and rocks and fire and bullets shooting you from the side. <laughs> this one's called Apple Snaffle, which as you can see is very clearly a Boulder Dash clone, but a very, very good one. For some reason there didn't seem to be any sound. I don't think, maybe I had a ROM that didn't have sound or something. And it's very easy to kind of screw yourself and get locked in here, just like I did here. And um, then your character just kind of sits there and eats a sandwich. <laughs> I love that little animation, it's so cool. All right, here's Arkanoid. Kind of like the evolution of Breakout. And uh, this one looks fantastic. Got your sticky, sticky balls there. I always go for the L for laser because then you can just shoot all the bricks out. It makes it so much easier and then I just I don't care about the rest of the power-ups and then on this stage I almost always go for that that edge right there the corner to try to get up there does everybody else do that too oh now we got the multi balls here they get going fast and then you can see there's a slight bit of slowdown there but uh, yeah that is a very good conversion okay here's a game called beef drop which obviously is a burger time clone one of my all-time favorite games the uh, hot dogs and eggs and pickles and everything that are in the game are just as erratic as the real arcade. You kind of have to trick them sometimes. Pretend to go up one ladder and then double back. And if they stand on the bun or any other part of the hamburger, then you can drop them all the way down to the bottom. Oh, that was a good one. Got the egg and squished a couple hot dogs at the same time. I hate having to use a pepper like that when I'm between two enemies. This has got good music and graphics and everything. I really wish they'd have released this game for the 7800 back in the day. This one's very challenging because it's hard to get up past the, the enemies because they, they put you in a spot that's very difficult. Oh, oh man, very close there. Ah. Okay, here's Bonk, which is very clearly a Cubert clone. It looks almost exactly perfect to the arcade. This may be the best home conversion of Cubert for a classic console that I've ever seen. That's a good way to end the match, just uh, take the little elevator up to the very top and drop on it. Now what happened to all the characters there? I think there must be a glitch. They all disappeared. Okay, here's Defender. Which I was sad to see was not uh, not completed. Looks like it's still in the um, coding stage. But it looks good. I kind of got bored here. I just started shooting the humanoids. <laughs> 
Okay, here's Dragon's Descent. And this is a pretty decent game. Uh, the character is a little bit slippery though. He kind of slides around the screen a little bit there, but this is a, a pretty neat idea for a game. Going from room to room, trying to find the keys, trying to find the exit. It reminds me a little bit of Secret Quest for the Atari 2600. Oh, found the exit. Let's go on to level two. Got different graphics for the different levels. I think this game needs a few more enemies on stage at once versus having just one on each screen. Okay, this one's called Dragon's Havoc. And first thing I'm gonna turn off the music, it's a little loud. As you can see, it's a, it's a side-scrolling shooter game, which has got some neat parallax scrolling on it. What I figured out is that each time you shoot one of the enemies, you gain a little bit of power. And each time you miss, you lose a little bit of power. You can see there's like an indicator above there at the top. And when you max out your power, it looks like you get a shield. This is a pretty fun little game. I like the like the graphics in it. Okay, here's a game called Dungeon Stalker, which is a port of the Intellivision game Night Stalker. I actually enjoyed this one. I've, I've never really played the Intellivision game too much, but this one I liked. It's kind of funny how that works. I mean, <laughs> you play a game you may not care for on a different system than your favorite, and it's not as good, but you play it on your favorite game system, and it's great. Oh, I got the sword, so now I'm going to go around and kill these guys. I'm invincible. Oh, but you don't want to go in the spider web. It slows you down. Not really sure what the goal here is. I mean, I'm just going around collecting treasures and hoping I can get to the next stage. And then here we are fighting, I guess, some wizard or something. I'm a wizard! But he's almost impossible to get because he jumps around too much. Alright, now we're fighting snakes. This game kind of reminds me of Wizard of War as well. One thing I, I kind of wish that this had different maps. It'd be kind of cool if it did. Ah, they got me. That's a fun game. I, I could have kept playing that forever. Okay, here's Frenzy, which is more or less the sequel to Berserk. And this one's kind of cool because you can shoot up some parts of the walls and uh, get the bad guys through the walls. Some of the walls, um, the straight walls, you can just bounce your laser off of, which is kind of cool. All right, here we go. This is uh, your original Berserk, which is also included with Frenzy. And it's got some voice, which is pretty awesome. These red guys always scared me because they started shooting back. The voice is really good, though. I'm not a chicken, I just had to escape at the last minute. Okay, here's Froggy, another one of my favorite uh, 7800 homebrews. Obviously a Frogger clone. And you'll notice something interesting about this game is that it has the original music. Which a lot of modern versions of Frogger do not have. Like the arcade 1UP version of Frogger does not have the music. That's because it's um, a copyrighted Japanese nursery rhyme that obviously they don't want them using it anymore. I mean, this is pretty much a dead-on conversion of the arcade game. Back in the day, I always remember how we would look at the pictures of the different versions and, you know, the graphics were just never up to par, but, I mean, this is absolutely perfect. Even when you die. And the cool thing is, uh, a lot of these games have high score capability with the high score cartridge, so you can save your high score. Okay, here's Galaxian. Kind of a forgotten game, honestly. You know, after Galaga came out, pretty much everybody forgot about this game. But there's something just so special about the, the sounds 
the way the enemies die and the way they they make that sound as they're attacking you. Iconic sounds in this game, I just love it. Alright, here's one uh, you might have heard of, Ghosts and Goblins. I didn't know that someone was working on a Ghosts and Goblins homebrew for the 7800. Looks pretty dang good, actually. Unfortunately, there's no sound in the game. Maybe a future version uh, will have sound if they work on it any further. I'm not really the biggest Ghosts and Goblins fan. You know, it, it's a hard game, but you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty well known, popular, and has some nice graphics. I had the hardest time getting across this little river thing here. Finally, I decided that I'm just gonna just walk off onto that little platform and oh, there we go. You gotta watch out for these guys. Gotta time it just right. Anyway, I got to the boss here and I was really worried that he was gonna stomp me because I want to see the next stage, but I figured out pretty quickly that he really couldn't do anything to me unless I touch him in the head and that seemed to be his vulnerable spot. So I hit him in the head with a spear and that was it. But now I can't go anywhere, I'm stuck. And here's Gorf. This does not look complete because the force field isn't getting broken up and the enemies don't seem to be able to hurt me, so... But we have laser attack here too. I noticed they just stopped moving after a while. And then we got Galaxians here. And Space Warp, which you'll see here that the ship doesn't seem to get any bigger as it gets closer. It just pretty much stays the same size. It's small the whole time. And then lastly we have the flagship, which as you shoot it, it breaks apart into big chunks versus little chunks. And then it just loops, but uh, yeah, that, that could be a good game. All right, here's Junior Pac-Man. This is a really, really great game. Scrolling left and right is so cool. The Atari 2600 version of this game scrolls up and down versus left and right, which is not arcade accurate. The size of the mazes in this game is like the only problem I have with it. It's just so big. <laughs> got me there. You want to make sure you get the toys uh, before they hit the power pellets because they'll destroy the power pellets. Okay, here's KC Munchkin. This was an Odyssey 2 game but has now been converted to the Atari 7800. Some time ago actually, I think. It's been a while. And uh, famously Atari sued over this game back in the day, so there's not as many copies of the original Odyssey 2 game. And uh, it's a pretty decent game. I mean, I mean I'd mean, i rather play Pac-Man, I think. It's kind of frustrating having to chase down those dots. But to say this is a completely different game than Pac-Man is uh, just not, not true. It's, it's a Pac-Man clone that's advanced, I suppose. Okay, here's one called Night Guy Castle Days. And uh, this is kind of an action puzzle game. Again, I feel like this is a, a game that's really suited for the 7800. I mean, check out the graphics. The graphics are really good in this. Such a variety of different stages here to deal with. And then I got to this part and I see the sword and then, uh-oh, now I, gotta, I guess I have to fight the skeleton guy? But he's shooting at me. I have no idea how I'm supposed to get down there and kill him because he shoots me before I can even get close to him. Okay, here's a game called Ninja-ish Guy, which I think is based on the same engine as the uh, Night Guy. Same sound effects and kind of the same idea of the game. We're traveling left to right trying to get to the next stage, trying to avoid the enemies. I'm not a big fan of those purple Star Trek flowers. Oh, okay, we gotta climb up here and crawl across, watching out for the swinging boulders, I guess. And look out for the, ah, oh, the fish, game over. All right, here's Popeye. 
which was the game Nintendo originally wanted to do, but they couldn't get the license, so they made Donkey Kong instead. Eventually they did get uh, the Popeye license, after I guess Donkey Kong, you know, was super popular. But this is a, a really great conversion of the game. The graphics are like, almost absolutely perfect to the original. And I used to play this a lot on the Atari 8-bit computer, the Parker Brothers version. And I got pretty good at it. But this game is way, way harder than that. Okay, go Popeye. Gotta get, get, gotta get Bluto. He's kind of tricky to get sometimes. Oh, and don't forget to knock the barrel on his head, and then you can walk past him. He can't, he can't hurt you. But the sea witch, man, she's just throwing so many bottles. It's ridiculous. Oh, it's gonna get close. You're only allowed two lives in this demo. Oof. Okay, we made it to stage two. This stage is so easy in the uh, the Atari 8-bit version. You can just hide from Bluto up the top there. I thought I could do that here, but I noticed he starts jumping up in the air a little bit more often. Man, this, they're just all over me here. Time to use the spinach. Oh, see, now look how easily he avoids me. Oh, man. Oh, I couldn't... Oh, I just barely missed him. I cannot believe I didn't get him. Oh, this is... Oh my gosh, I can't believe I made it through those bottles. So close, so close, so close. Just got a couple more to get. Oh, oh man. Oh, I almost made it to the last stage. But that's a fantastic conversion of this game. Okay, this one's called Slide Boy in Maze Land. It's kind of a puzzle action game. You can only slide around. I don't know if you can shoot or anything. You just have to avoid the uh, obstacles and get to the end of the stage. Some pretty clever stage designs, I'll say here. Even on stage one and two. This one I couldn't quite figure out. Somehow you gotta get up there, but there's really... There doesn't seem to be a way to get up there. Probably the best way to figure this out would be to, like, reverse it. You know, like, pretend like you're leaving the exit and then go backwards. That might be the way to do it, but that's a pretty cool game. Alright, Super Pac-Man. A game that I don't know that has ever been released on any platform before. Maybe the Commodore 64, because it that seems to get every game. But uh, yeah, this is a good conversion of Super Pac-Man. Never really been a big fan of Super Pac-Man. I kind of wish they had different mazes. Ah. Of course, my favorite part is getting the super pill and uh, just kind of moving around all over the maze. And going inside of the, uh, the ghost house there. This one even has the little animations in between. Oh yeah, my favorite, uh, favorite stage, eating the hamburgers. And I'm just gonna go as Super Pac-Man and just tear up all these, uh, the doors. Alright, here's one called, uh, Uniwars, or maybe it's Uniwar S, because the S is capitalized. I'm not sure about that one, but this apparently is, uh, an IREM arcade game. Kinda reminds me of Mega Mania, different stages. Probably more so than, uh, Roach in Space. But, uh, this one's kinda tough. This group of bad guys are really tough because you gotta hit the hit them in the right spot because they got those shields on. And lastly, here's a game called Wizard's Dungeon. Oh, I'm a wizard! Which kind of reminds me of Gauntlet. It's a pretty neat little uh, dungeon crawling shooting game kind of thing. I guess I'm shooting fireballs at these bad guys or something. Gotta go around and collect all the treasure. 
And th see that there is a tombstone. And I'll explain what that's for here in a little bit. I guess that's some elixir there. Those red guys kind of remind me of, well, I think they're the cyber demons from Doom. Okay, here's another uh, gravestone here. I don't know what it takes to get the gates to open up, but I guess finally shooting these guys uh, did it. There's a mummy, and there's a snake. Okay, see right here now it says, find gravestone. I guess I should have gone back to the to the right there, but I just decided I was going to press on and see what I, what I can find. See if I can find another uh, gravestone, but I've only got a few seconds to find one. And then I'm going to... Eh, game over. See, that's what happens. So when you die, you have to find a gravestone uh, in order to continue. That's a pretty good one. I was getting kind of addicted to that game. Alright, well there you have it. There's some Atari 7800 homebrews. If you're interested in purchasing, some of these are available in the Atari Age store, so you may want to go by and check it out. Also, some of these games you can play through the link below I've left in the description. And if you're looking for the ROMs, just look up Trevor's 7800 ROM Pro Pack, and you'll find pretty much all of them. Alright, well that's it for today. Thank you for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.